Lustig, lustig aus Spanien. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Buenas tardes, yeah. yeah. So you're in Spain, I'm in southern Austria, I just had a turbulent family reunion like each year around uh, New Year's Eve. But of course, we are going to speak about Chile. Most fascinating what's going on there. Uh, can you tell me what your last uh, your last informations are? Yes, so uh, I mean, this is a, a spectacular country, interesting geographically because of the people and because of the politics. And um, what's going on there uh, in terms of uh, the election, they just elected the new president, uh, Boric, who's going to be uh, represents uh, the center left, I think it's my understanding. And uh, they're also in the middle of a constitutional convention in which they're rewriting the constitution completely. Yeah. So, but it had, started, that had started well before the elections. So yes. you were in discussion with the Senate and you were in discussion with the Chilean authorities and lawmakers and scientists and public representatives because something phenomenal is coming at us. Uh, yeah. Innovations, breakthroughs in neurosciences. And exactly. before we go into that, before we go into that, of course, uh, the public worldwide, not only in Chile, United States, Europe, worldwide, is totally and absolutely unprepared for for what <laughs> is coming at us. Let's face it like that. Absolutely. And and of course, uh, the uh, these facts, all these new facts, they always create norms. And these norms have to be created, like when the automobile was invented and came into circulation, of course, we had to create new norms. The automobile first, then came the norms, and that means we have traffic lights now, which is an infringement on my personal on my personal freedom. I like to to run a red traffic light when there's deep in the night and nothing is moving. Uh, and of course, uh, speed limits and so on. Uh, or a pandemic is hitting worldwide. It creates norms of behavior. You wear a face mask, you do certain things. Um, but now with the innovations in, um, in uh, neuroscience, uh, we have to create new norms of behavior, meaning norms of we have that already uh, when we are thinking about freedom of speech, but now all of a sudden freedom of thought is being challenged, autonomy yeah. of thought. But Raphael, before we go into this, can you describe what are the phenomenal breakthroughs uh, that you are yeah. witnessing? You are part of it, you are the scientist. Yes, yeah, so uh, and this is an extraordinary moment that we're living in neuroscience because we're finally starting to understand how the brain works and we're developing the technology, the neurotechnology that we call to both access information from the brain and change our brain activity, brain information. And uh, the thing is, uh, Werner, that the brain is not just another organ like your liver or your heart. The brain is the organ that generates your mind all of your mental abilities, your perception, your thoughts, your memories, your feeling, your speech right now, your your behavior, everything is generated up here. So by being able to access that information for the first time and changing, we are we are opening uh, the uh, the box, the Pandora's box for the ultimate the potential uh, manipulation of the human being, the in yeah. infinite manipulation. Yeah. Yeah. But before you speak of manipulation, without manipulating me, you could, to a certain degree, already now read my thoughts. If you well, put a helmet on me that, uh, yeah. that uh, uh, records my brain activity, you can yeah. read my thoughts. So let's assume you are a secret service in a rogue country. You yeah. can tie me to a chair, put on a helmet on me, ask me some very delicate questions and I don't even have to confess. You can yeah. read what I'm thinking. And this is alarming. Surprised. Yeah, yeah. I completely agree with you. I think I would be surprised if this has not been uh, done yet undercover in certain parts of the world. Because even though you cannot completely decipher what people are thinking, 
you can start to decipher with increasing uh, ability um, mental states uh, and even uh, if you have a good model of the person if you can scan yeah. the person for a while you can uh, decipher the pictures that the person is conjuring in his head no yeah so you so can... we're, we're, we're getting there we're getting there yeah it's it's a very enhanced light detector so to yeah. speak but at the same time there's a great blessing it uh, in it uh, and I have seen with my own eyes tests being made with persons who are locked inside of their own head. They had had a stroke and they cannot speak and they cannot react with their eyelids or anything anymore. And um, with sometimes with an implant or sometimes with uh, reading through a helmet, you can get basic answers. Are you yeah. feeling well? Yes or yeah. no? And the, and the person who cannot speak and, and, and express himself or herself anymore can give you responses. Do you yeah. need something? Are you yeah. thirsty? Uh, do you want the light dimmed down? Some some very fundamental things can be improved for patients. So yeah. the danger in it, the danger in it for rogue elements and, the, and they have to be protected. But yeah. at the same time, what I find most interested, interesting in this uh, legal initiatives is the fact it's not only a protection of us that we need, we also need an open access, the right um, the right of access. You see, when you are when you are paraplegic and you cannot respond uh, and you cannot explain I want my brain being read for my basic needs, uh, you as a as a patient should have automatically the right to have these tools at your disposal. Doctors, without being able to ask you, should be entitled to read your brain and know some of the very fundamental um, uh, needs that you might have. Absolutely. No, so I it's think a two way two way legislation. Well, it, this is this is the way that technology uh, is always neutral. You can use it to help uh, people, to help patients, to help mankind, or you can use it for nefarious uh, consequences. And uh, it's up to the legislators and to the societies to harness the technology so that they actually can yeah. be used for the for the good of mankind. No? And everything you're saying is it's exactly right. No? This neurotechnology that could be so threatening to our mental uh, privacy yeah. at the same time, like our, our colleague uh, Eddie Chang that we uh, we interviewed together at UCSF, yeah. his patients that are paralyzed with new technology can actually speak at 100 words per, yeah. per minute. No? So he, he can release uh, them from yeah. these prisons of, of, yeah. you of mental- uh, You can yes. read language. You can read language, but we are also capable, and I've also seen tests you can do telepathy in very primitive forms. You you make a fist and open your hand, and you can give telepathic orders that I do the same. And I will. It actually happens, and we have seen that. So, yeah. in other words, what do you do now with the uh, soldier in the bunker in um, uh, in South Dakota at a, a rocket silo? who has to press the button to release an intercontinental uh, devastating rocket towards God knows which enemy. So uh, we have to protect ourselves. Yeah. We have to have, at least we have to have guidelines, ethical guidelines, legal guidelines. Exactly, exactly. So that, that's where we need the human rights uh, that protect ourselves and they protect our brains really because by protecting our brains, we're protecting our minds. And this is something that was never necessary before uh, because they, we didn't have the technology to get into the brain, but now we have yeah. that. Yes, yeah. yes. So, and so and this... uh, why do you think that Chile, What explain about Chile. I love the country. Yeah. And, uh, and all of a sudden it's uh, at the forefront in the world, the first country of all nations who starts uh, a, a legal procedure to change constitution and have it as a human right, as a constitutional amendment, the yes. rights 
to our own thoughts. See, yeah, there, yeah. there, are three, there are three reasons, I think, why Chile has pioneered this uh, uh, neuroprotection uh, legislation, the neuro rights, with a constitutional amendment and the Bill of Law. And uh, the first uh, reason has to do with the fact that Chileans are brave. This is a country of brave people. Uh, in order to go to that part of the world as an immigrant, uh, you have to be pretty pretty brave because it's you have to go all the way to the end and cross the Andes or go around the Cape Horn. This is not easy. So um, yeah, well, in that geopolitical <laughs> advantage of Chile, you see, when yeah. you are when you are living in Sicily, Sicily over millennia has been invaded by every single country in the Mediterranean: Carthage, yes. Byzantium, Italy, the Spanish, the Normans. You just name it. And, and Chile has the advantage of, of having a natural border, the Andes, and on yeah. the other side, the Pacific Ocean. Yeah. However, there, it's not completely undisputed. You, you have to acknowledge that, uh, for example, Bolivia still wants access to the Pacific yeah. uh, and in the strip of land. So, But it's unresolved. But ultimately, ultimately uh, Chile is a blessed country which didn't have to undergo all these crazy fluctuations and movements of um, of, of uh, populations. However, yeah. of course, the conflicts of Chile, if we are speaking of any interior, uh, Chile has experienced uh, a time of uh, dictatorship with torture yeah. and all these things. It has internal problems with the indigenous population. It will be solved. It has been there for centuries, but it has to be solved and it will be solved in a decent way. I, I assume yeah. Chile, as it is such a, it's a very progressive, very advanced country with great advanced agriculture, great advanced poetry, a, a country of, uh, of, of many blessings. It's such yeah. a blessed country. And of course, in ecology, they are very far advanced and in their advance because they are blessed with Patagonia. They are blessed with a desert. They are blessed with the uh, with the Andes. They are blessed with the Pacific. So uh, it's it's a very wonderful country. I share I share uh, your love and admiration for Chile. Uh, I think uh, also the fact that they had this this uh, trouble past with respect to human rights and torture and dictatorship uh, has made Chile very sensitive. Chilean society is very sensitive to human rights issues. In yeah. fact, it's not a coincidence that the High Commissioner of Human Rights for the whole world, for the UN, is Chilean, former President Bachelor. I did not know yet. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And if, if you go to international organization, very often you find Chileans as the top experts in human rights because they take it, they take pride of being strong in something that has <laughs> affected them so dearly. But then on top of that, something that very, uh, that's not well known about Chile, which is very remarkable, is that they have a very uh, modern uh, legislative system. So, for instance, the Senate of the Republic has this office, the office, the Committee for the Future, that yeah. introduces legislation yeah. based on science and the latest science and, yeah. and medicine. And this yeah. is exactly why Chile, these are the three reasons, the, the brave yeah. character of the people and the, the human rights sensitivity and the modern legislative system yeah. that has uh, yeah. made Chile the way, yeah. Rafael, I should mention, and you know that I have been invited by okay. the by the senatorial committee, and I'm very grateful, very thankful. Unfortunately, I'm torn ar around between Europe, and I have some two films to finish and two books to to release. So I can't be there right at this moment. But I I really appreciate this attention and that uh, Chile sees me as well as much as we see Chile. And what I find particularly fascinating is that uh, you are in Madrid. Spain uh, has gotten somehow the itch to to start legislature and yeah. the, Uni the United Nations. You spoke 
you yourself and a few other colleagues of yours spoke to the United Nations um, and to the uh, also the American presidency to to the White House. Yes. You had meetings, yes. so yes. there seems to be something coming. Chile yes. is only yes. the the vanguard, yes. the shining well, the shining example out there. I think the. Uh, People in Spain, in the UN, and in the US government are looking now at Chile, at what the Chileans have done and are doing with respect to protection of brain activity. And uh, I will, um, I know, Werner, that you cannot be at the Congress of the Future this year, but I will bring your uh, words and your voice and this recording to the Chilean uh, Senate and so that the Chilean people can, can listen to it uh, yeah. directly no, as uh, if you were there. Yeah. Yeah. Rafael, thank you very much, and, and I salute everyone in Chile, including, of course, the Senate. But I, I want to come to Chile for other reasons. I um, I have this, it's very advanced uh, because I'm kind of recognized as a filmmaker. But since four decades, I keep saying my prose and my poetry will probably live longer than my films. And Chile is a country that is going completely wild when I show up and I read from new books or so, I, I will come to Chile this this year and I'm, I'm sure I will read new things and I will have discourse, discourse about poetry and not only by poetry, poetry in general, Chilean poets. So it's a, it's a, that's a good, good country, the right soil for, for returning. So it's, it's not that I'm, I'm not permanently uh, absent and of course, we have done um, some filming in Chile for the new film that we did together, Theatre of Thought, uh, which will uh, be released. We don't know exactly when, but sometime this year. And uh, we will show it in Chile, of course, as well, because Chile has a word in it and, and it, has a, it has a brief presence in it as well. So, uh, we uh, we should well, we should why don't we, why don't, exactly. we should travel why don't we together. Let's yeah, go when, together to Chile to 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 uh, for the presentation of the movie, of the film. Yes, yeah, we should do that. That and poetry and uh, friendship and uh, everything that's good in life. We should go there and uh, wonderful. Rafael, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do that. So. Uh, Rafael, we'll see each other in, well, probably New York first or wherever, but but we should try to get go together to Chile. Let's try and meet there. All right, and best of luck Let's to the Chileans for this Thank new you. year 2022. May it be a wonderful, progressive, good, solid uh, year for them and for you as well. Thank you, Werner. Take okay. Care.